Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Monday, and it is time for our daily devotion, so I want to invite you to come and join me for our devotional moment. I'll be your host today, and we'll be doing our normal devotion out of the upper room. I'm going to wait a couple moments and just watch folks uh, to see who joins. And as you do, if you want to leave a quick comment, let me know you're present. That would be awesome. Would appreciate you doing that. I'll say good morning to folks. And then here uh, shortly, I will announce what our scripture is for today. And then we'll begin with our devotion time. Hi, Linda. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. It does let me know who's watching, even though you might not have left a message yet or a comment. <laughs> Just going to watch a little bit. Wait a couple minutes. Give folks ample time to show up. Glad you're watching from Jeff City, David. Hi, Jack. Hi, Pat. Good morning to both of you. Morning, Barbara. We're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. If you haven't uh, received your new upper room, we have those available here at the church. You know, you can also sign up for the free devotion online, too, just so you know. Hi, Stacy. Good morning to you. Upper room will send that to you for free each day. Same devotion that's printed. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to both of you. Again, we're reading out of Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. That's our scripture reading for today. Here's our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13 reads, When Jesus went to Capernaum, a centurion approached, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is flat on his back at home, paralyzed, and his suffering is awful. Jesus responded, I'll come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. I am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and the servant does it. When Jesus heard this, he was impressed and said to the people following him, I say to you with all seriousness that even in Israel, I haven't found faith like this. I say to you that there are many who will come from east and west and sit down to eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. 
Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done for you just as you have believed. And his servant was healed that very moment. Our devotion writer today is Cletus L. Hall III, and Cletus is from Pennsylvania. His focus verse comes out of Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 in the NRSV. It reads, Jesus said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And here is Cletus's devotion. When I served as a pastor at a church in Pennsylvania, someone called me with a personal concern. As the conversation ended, I asked if I could pray with them. Sounding surprised, he said, Can you do that over the phone? Praying over the phone was new for him. Maybe it doesn't sound strange to us today, but it's easy to resist at first that which is different. But we prayed, and God did the rest. Every generation creates new ways of expressing love for Christ. As a pastor, I am always searching for innovative ways to reach people. Social media has become the new way to proclaim the same message, Jesus and his redeeming love for us on the cross. We hear this word from Matthew's gospel, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Christ is the glue that binds us even through our new technologies. Years ago, I heard another phrase that struck me, and I think about it when I pray with people over the phone or social media. There is no distance in prayer. Because of Christ, we have a strong connection holding us together. So the thought for the day is there is no distance in prayer. Um. My wife, uh, as you all know, is a manufacturer sales rep in the toy industry. She attends a variety of different um, events each year. Uh, most of them are either market in Dallas or they are manufacturers meetings, usually held either in New York or in, De in Vegas. And then periodically she'll, she'll get a chance to go to some other places. But uh, one of the things that she goes to every year is what's called ASTRA. And ASTRA stands for American Specialty, Specialty Toy Retailers Association. That's what it stands for. And they do trainings there. And she sits in on many of those different trainings. And, and one of those trainings was on the use of social media. It was big for her industry during the pandemic for people to try to figure out how to use social media adeptly to be able to continue to do sales. And so they would highlight toys and, and games and puzzles and all these different things. And, and a lot of her folks became really good at doing that. In one of those trainings, the guy talked about the use of TikTok and the use of Instagram and in particular, people who are in communities and things like that and how they might use those. Margaret came home and, and his comment was, if you're not on Instagram and TikTok, you're behind the times. And she, she quoted that to me. I'm not on TikTok and I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> I'm barely on Facebook, um, as most of you probably notice. Uh, not, not necessarily a big thing for me when it comes to social media. Uh, and maybe that's um, because I, I'm my personality type. I don't like connecting with people over the anonymous um, and stuff like that. I, I am I'm more about um, engaging people um, personally. I, I value the interpersonal relationship of that. But maybe one of these days, who knows, I might break down and I might eventually find myself on the other media platforms. I'm not on Twitter either. Well, I take that back. I have a Twitter handle. It's RevJim2917. I haven't sent out a tweet in probably 10 years. <laughs> so, just so you know, at least nine, as long as I've been here at St. John's. But So, uh, maybe I'll get back to that. But one of the things that, that just kind of reminds me of is, is that, that we think of connection in certain kinds of ways, right? We, we may be narrow in our focus of what that means. We might be broader in our focus of what that means, right? And so it might be the, the very um, high touch, very personal, in-person kind of, of uh, perspective. And that's how you connect with other people. And that's what it means 
for two or three to be together, you know, for you. Uh, we're learning here at the church that um, even though we may have, like yesterday, um, 79 people that came to worship uh, between the chapel service and the sanctuary service, but we've got another 30 or more that are online with us each Sunday. And that just because you're online doesn't mean you're disconnected. Where two or three are gathered, there I will be. And, and so I think it's important for us to be reminded that we are a community that's evolving and that's changing. And as much as we all appreciate the in-person, um, we have to realize that we have several folks that are also a part of our community that can't make it in-person with us. Some of those for physical reasons, some of those distance limitations, other things, um, other reasons. But to be thankful that folks are engaging and that people are, are being a part of our community and that in those engagements, hopefully you're hearing the continued message that God loves uh, you and God loves all and that we are called to be people who serve the world. And so I hope that in this time of prayer online, Two or three of us are gathered here or more. We're all gathered around this devotion time. We know that as we pray together, God will be one who will also be with us. So maybe think about the ways in which you're engaging folks. And it could be that your prayer could be a text message that you send to somebody. It could be a phone call that you make. Your prayer could be a handwritten card that you send. Your prayer could be a post on Facebook Instagram, it could be a post on TikTok, wherever it is. Snapchat, what album, your Twitter, any of those, you know, you can leave a post and you can be at prayer. And there'll be people who will gather around that moment. And I believe God will heal and God will hear and God will do God's thing, God's work, no matter what we decide or what we determine. I think God can use all these vehicles and venues and remind us that we are connected one with another, and through prayer, God hears and works. So we're going to take that moment now to pause, and we're going to do that. We're going to pray together, because we're all gathered here, and I believe the Spirit is among us and with us. And so in the power of the Spirit, we pray, dear Lord, remind us that you can draw us together in community, no matter the physical distance between us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And the prayer focus was churches working with new technology. <laughs> All right? So, well, come join me tomorrow for our devotion time, if you would, please. Great to have all of you here today. So thankful for those that, that made it a little bit later on. Hi, Shirley. Good morning to you. Marcella, good morning to you. Glad you all made it. Those of you that maybe stopped by a little bit later on, please leave a comment as well. Would greatly appreciate knowing you were here. And if you can and want to, you are more than welcome to share this on your own timeline uh, once we finish with the devotion. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow. Bye, friends.